Greetings, everyone. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee, here with your daily devotional. This time reading from a classic, My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers, a uh, great preacher, a Scottish Baptist and, re, uh, and holiness uh, minister from uh, early 20th century times. Uh, he died when he was in, uh, involved as a chaplain for the YMCA, actually, in World War I of complications from an appendicitis attack. His wife, uh, his widow, collected up a bunch of his writings and uh, put put this little compilation together. It's been in print, actually, since back in the uh, early part of the 20th century and not ever gone out of print. And it's been uh, translated into 39 different languages. So it's really uh, uh, quite popular, as you might imagine. I'm reading today a selection from Revelation 1-7. He pulls from a verse in each of his each of these selected writings. And because of the fact that we've been studying Revelation, or just started studying it anyway this past Sunday, uh, I thought I would, I would draw upon that writing. If, by the way, you missed the intro, I hope you'll go back to thevillagechapel.com and uh, watch that so that you're prepared uh, as we go into the study uh, this coming Sunday. We'll finish up chapter one and the studies that follow. It'd be great to have had the opportunity to uh, watch the intro and get yourself sort of set up for this amazing book uh, that we call Revelation. He quotes here, Oswald Chambers does, uh, Revelation 1, 7. Look, he's coming with clouds. Of course, uh, talking about Jesus and um, sort of uh, echoing what we read even in the gospel records where Jesus talks about the fact that he'll be coming back. They'll, they'll see the Son of Man coming with majesty in the clouds and coming to, to literally wrap up human history. Um, this writing says, In the Bible, clouds are always connected with God. Clouds are those sorrows or sufferings or providences within or without our personal lives, which seem to dispute the rule of God. And so he's using clouds, of course, as a metaphor for those kinds of providences, sufferings, or sorrows in our lives uh, that happen and that sometimes uh, make us ask questions about God's providence or God's wisdom or God's timing. Um, it is by those very clouds that the Spirit of God is teaching us how to walk by faith. If there were no clouds, we should have no faith. The clouds are but the dust of our Father's feet. And again, very poetic imagery here, uh, as if the Lord at his feet, as he's walking through his creation, is just stirring up the dust, and that's what it, or his clouds. The clouds are a sign that he is there. What a revelation it is to know that sorrow and bereavement and suffering are the clouds that come along with God. God cannot come near without clouds. He does not come in clear shining. Uh, it is not true to say that God wants to teach us something in our trials through every cloud he brings. He wants us to unlearn something. And this is just an interesting take on this. Uh, uh, his way of thinking and, and, and uh, analyzing and interpreting um, these kinds of things. I, I find this interesting. He wants us to unlearn something, is what he's saying. His purpose, God's purpose in the cloud, is to simplify our belief until our relationship to him is exactly that of a child. God and my own soul, other people, and he would even say, I'm sure, other things, completely just shadows. Until other people become shadows, clouds and darkness will be mine every now and again. Is the relationship between myself and God getting simpler than ever it has been? Great question to ask. What's a trajectory of our relationship with God? Are we drawing nearer and nearer and closer to him? Uh, is Christ becoming preeminent in our lives uh, in a proper way? There's a connection between the strange providences of God, Chambers says, and what we know of him. And we have to learn to interpret the mysteries of life in the light of our knowledge of God. So true. Unless we can look the darkest, blackest fact full in the face without damaging God's character, we do not know him yet. I think he's right there as well, as we learn from Romans chapter 8. Uh, God causes all things, uh, even the suffering that we must go through and the difficulties that we endure and the isolation and the 
losses that we incur, all of those. He causes all of those things to work together for our good so that his glory gets poured through all of that. Last paragraph. They were afraid as they entered the cloud. And he has that in quotes. And he says, is there anyone save Jesus only in your cloud? If so, it will get darker. You must get to the place where there is no one anymore save Jesus only. And that we're looking for the hand of God uh, in each and every situation that we must go through, especially these clouds, uh, the, this metaphor for all of these uh, um, difficulties, the sufferings and the sorrows and the providences that are mysterious to us. Great insight uh, from Oswald Chambers. Let me pray for us today. Lord, thank you that you are there in the clouds and the darkness and that you, that your voice can be heard, Lord, that we uh, find that we are being held fast by you, our Father who art in heaven. And it is to you we pray, even in this day, uh, that you'll make your presence known to us as we turn to you as a child in faith, believing, trusting, hoping in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who one day will come literally, quite literally, in the clouds to wrap up human history and set everything right. We pray in his precious name. Amen and amen.